Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Okay, you guys being awfully quiet. Now, I know that God has been too good to you guys to be just sitting here awfully quiet. Let's try this again. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. My name is Evangelist Juanita Bridgewater, and I'm under the leadership of Bishop Roscoe Jones. I am here this evening to uh, help out Reverend uh, Jones this evening, and it's just such a blessing to be here and a blessing to see each and every one of you. Okay? God has been good. He's good all the time. So let's just start out with the uh, scripture. I will praise thee with my whole heart before God. I will sing praises unto thee. I will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness, for thy truth, for thy had magnified thy word. Above all, above all their name. In the day when I cry, thou answered me and strengthened me with strength in my soul. All the kings of earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of their mouth. Yet they shall sing in the way of the Lord, for the great is the glory of the Lord. I just read you Psalm 138, 1 through 5. If we can just bow our heads in prayer, please. Oh, precious Lord, we come to you this evening, Father. We come to you, Father, just to humble as we know how. We come to you, first of all, Father, thanking you for another day. Lord, you didn't have to give us this day, Father, but you saw fit to give it to us. And Father, we just want to thank you Lord, I ask you to bless each and every one that's here under my weak voice, Father. Father, you, lo you know all our needs, Jesus. And Father, we just depending on you. Because, Father, you said if we ask in thy holy name that we shall receive. And we just want to thank you, God. We thank you for this day, Father. We thank you for this organization. We thank you for letting us rise here safely and sound. In all of this, we ask in that name, amen. Amen. Now, I am an evangelist. I am also chairperson of Grandparents Raising Grandchildren Committee. I also have a com uh, support group for grandparents support that are raising their grandchildren and kinship. God has been truly good to me. I grew up in Alabama. And just to see where God has brought me from up until now, I thank God every and each and every day because he's truly been good to me and my family. I don't know about you, but I know he's been good to me. And by looking at you, I see that God's been good to you too, whether you want to give him the praise or not, because you know he's worthy to be praised. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, let me, let me just start by asking y'all something. Since y'all are so quiet, what did you come here to expect today? To hear what God got in store for us. Okay. So, why are we so quiet? Didn't he wake you up this morning? You didn't wake yourself up this morning. That alarm clock didn't wake you up this morning. He woke you up this morning, didn't he? All right. He put a roof over your head, did he not? Hello? Hello, somebody? All right. He put food on your table. Clothes on your back. Okay, now we sit here like he ain't worthy to be praised. Okay? I'm, I'm going to just tell you like uh, Bishop Morton said, don't look at me. It ain't about me. It's all about God. Okay? It's all about him. Amen. 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 All right. Somebody need to come on. Because, I mean, God has been too good to us. Look at all these people out here getting killed. Look at all these. They're breaking into your home and, and doing each and everything to everybody, killing older people, robbing people. Now, God is good, isn't he? Yes. Hello. Yes. Yes. All right, all right, now come on, come on, come on. 
<laughs> right? I know he's good. He's been good to me. Brought me a mighty long ways. I was in a motorcycle accident. I was on crutches for almost a year. Had two surgeries. But I'm still here. Why? Because God had something for me to do. Amen? Amen. And then I had to go to Atlanta to get my grandson out of foster care. He was there a year and a half. But God saw fit to give him to me. Amen? Amen? So, you know, I wake up every morning running around thinking, praising God. My neighbor thinks something wrong with me. <laughs> but see, they just don't know what God has done for me. Amen? Amen. All right now, y'all need to come on. Y'all been a little bit too quiet for me. I'm not used to folks being quiet. Because, see, I know what God has, can do. And, I, and I'm assuming y'all know too. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, all right, all right. So now, I guess I, our next speaker is going to be Mrs. Um, Nina White. Nina White. Miss White, let's give Miss White a hand. All right. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. I just want to thank um, Evangelist Juanita for that beautiful prayer and opening for me. I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Nina White. Um, Mark and I have partnered up with each other um, because we have common goals and common interests, and in it's you know what we believe about God. Our primary goal is saving souls, and our primary focus is starting on with our black community. Um, a little background about myself, I'm going to give my testimony, and that's where we're going to leave it. But um, I grew up on Seven Mile and Outer Drive. I want to say like with a basically a silver spoon in my mouth, you know, basically I was spoiled. I mean, my mom and dad were totally in love, and everything was good in my life, you know. I probably only got one whooping in my life, if that, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know. And then my dad died. So it wasn't such a great time in my life. And I started rebelling, you know. Just, I didn't, I was mad at my dad. I was mad at God. I was just angry, you know. Started messing up in school. And um, when I was in high school, a friend of mine came up to me with a liter of vodka. Mm -hmm. And a duffel bag. Mm -hmm. And she said, I know where we can make some money at. Now, I didn't need no money. My dad died left me money. You know what I'm saying? I'm still spending that. You know, and that was years ago. But anyway, she was like, I know where we can make some money. I think I was 17 years old. And um, I said, while I'm drinking, yeah, where? Then the devil, you know, drinking the devil's juice. And we went to the brass key. I don't know if y'all know where that is yet. Went to the brass key, started dancing. Um, I, I think I made like $250, $300 that first night, and it was good, you know, shoot. I was like, okay, I'm going to keep doing this, you know. Did it for the next, I would say six, seven years, I just became an alcoholic stripper, mm -hmm. basically. I mean, talk about dancing with the devil. I was dancing with the devil, y'all, starting at six, 17 years old. I mean, that place got shot up so many times, I seen people drop dead right next to me being shot. That could have been me. My friends overdosed. Getting beaten, getting around I me, mean, all this stuff going on right around me. I was in hell, the pit of hell. You know. So I believe God, you know, I'm not gonna say he started talking to me, dealing with me yet, because then I God did get out of it. Because I got pregnant with my son. But it didn't slow me down. It just made me tell myself, okay, I need to dance. Well, I need to get this money because I didn't want to be on welfare. I want him to be sharp. And the stupid part about it, yeah, he was sharp, but I wasn't giving him the love he really needed. He just was sharp. We was just too sharp. We were sharp. I was drunk, and he was sharp, you know. It was ridiculous. It was just the devil was in me, you know. And um, so eventually I stopped dancing. My son got a little older, two or three or and four. So I started saying, uh-uh, I can't do this. You know, at least I, he was trying to deal with me, I think, at that point. But I went from one extreme to another. Got with the biggest dope dealer in the deep. You know how that is. Yeah, I was cute. I was dead to have my money. Caught the biggest dope dealer. You know, 
So I went from one extreme, extreme to another. You know, my life was in jeopardy with him, you know, still. Even though I got out of that dancing lifestyle, here I go, being with this dope dealer where he didn't been shot seven times. Mm. You know, it was ridiculous. And then, so, I really, I start, I got away from him. I got away from him. And that's when God really started trying to, you know, dealing with me. I knew it then. At this point, I knew it. Because I heard God tell me, it's your life or him. Really, literally, just heard it just like that. It's your life or this man. You're going to choose him, you're going to die. You're going to choose you or him, basically. So I try, I said, Lord, okay. When he's told me that, I started trying to deal with it. I tried to better myself, but I, I tried to do it on my own. You know what I'm talking about, sister. I tried yeah. to do it on my own. Okay, well, I'm going to leave him. I'm not dancing anymore. I'm going to do right. But I didn't, one thing I was missing, I wasn't going to church. Yeah, I became a good person. Mm -hmm. But it's that, it, that's not all it takes, y'all, and I'm going I'm to get to that, too. I couldn't do it by myself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, and some of my friends right now still dancing, and we wonder why, you know, I know I'm, I don't want to tell my age, but I got a 20-year-old and a 3-year-old. Mm -hmm. They 17 years apart, none in between. Tell me God wasn't trying to tell me something. Yes, he did. Trying to slow me down. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's, my friends are still dancing. And we wonder why these young guys and these girls out here, if I, you know, these young guys out here pulling guns out, they up there seeing their grandma and G-strings and stuff. I'd be going crazy, too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, they dancing at my, I mean, grandma's up there with the G, and the boys, you wonder why they 15, 16 shooting. They angry. And that's what me and Mark trying to change that right now. I'm going to start with my testimony. I'm going to keep finishing and let y'all know something else. Mm -hmm. So... Have y'all ever had that voice in y'all telling y'all, okay, it's time to change? Have y'all? Mm -hmm. Or some of y'all may not heard it yet. Listen to that voice, I'm telling you. Amen. Because if you don't, you could die or you would lose your mind. So let me finish this. Mm -hmm. I did not get it yet because I didn't go completely to God. Mm -hmm. So guess what? I went through something else. Mm. He'll whip you. <laughs> Listen, with Donna, you just about to blow your mind. <laughs> but then at the end... Y'all gonna know why I'm standing why I'm standing here. It was nothing but God. So I went to my sister's church and you know the pastor was speaking. I was like, okay, cool, cool. I like this. So at the end he called Art to call and it felt like a crane pulled me to the front. My sister said your face was beat red. You just it wasn't me. I the guy was telling me, come on now. Mm -hmm. Got up there, I said it with my mouth. I said, I confessed with my mouth and I believed it in my heart. I was like, yeah, Jesus, you died for me. And I know it by the blood of, by, by the blood of yours, I'm, I'm here. You, you saved me. Because I, I saw a lot, you know. I could have, people was dropping dead next to me. Mm. You know, and that could have been me. So I did confess with my mouth. It didn't stop there, though, y'all. I was going every blue moon to church. Every purple moon going. <laughs> Got with um, her father. Mm -hmm. Wasn't married. Look, she here. We was unwed, had a baby. This man drove me crazy, y'all. Because I still wasn't right with God. Mm -hmm. You could say it, believe it in your heart, know it, then confess it, but you got to make the right moves towards him. You got to move towards him. Mm -hmm. Don't just say it, oh yeah, okay. No, I didn't move towards him, I just believed it. Do you know this man mentally abused me, never physical, mm -hmm. mentally in four years. You know, and I, I, he <laughs> sent me to a mental institution. Mm -hmm. After all that I had been through, survived dancing, <coughs> survived being with this dope dealer for all them years, and then this one single man take me out of here to get me up, locked up in the mental institution? Mm -hmm. This deep, y'all. Don't let nobody take y'all like that. You got to believe in God. Because it can happen to you. That's why I'm here telling you. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, I snapped. I pulled a gun out on I just snapped. And then my family was like, it's time for you. You gonna kill this man? Because, you know, it's not worth it. Because he didn't, but he, he mentally abused me for all those years. Tell me I was ugly, fat, old, you too old to be having a baby, ain't nobody going to want you. Just mentally abusing me for years. Mm -hmm. And I lost my mind and went and got locked up in the mental institution. Mm. I'm standing here in front, right now in front of y'all being able to tell you this. If it wasn't for God's strength, that's, I would be still in there or dead or something. On the street. Drinking, drunk somewhere, you know. Mm -hmm. 
I was on six different medications a day, twice a day. Mm -hmm. Twelve pills a day at my age. Mm. I ain't taking not one pill today. Mm -hmm. All right. But God. I'm gainfully employed. I'm assistant property manager at a posh townhouse community. Mm -hmm. I got an associate's degree in liberal, liberal arts working on my bachelor's. My, I don't take not one pill. You know, I don't need none of that no more. Mm -hmm. And I'm just here to tell you, that's what I'm trying to say. His promise is real, and that's our point. Yes, it is. The promise of God. And let me tell you something. Isaiah 41 and 10 said, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Mm -hmm. I will strengthen thee. That's why I'm here to talk in front of y'all. He strengthened me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I, I, I didn't have to tell y'all that all about my business, but y'all need to hear that. Because mm -hmm. some of y'all sisters could be going through that too. Some of y'all brothers may want to go home with <coughs> y'all woman or whatever. That's why I'm able to tell it because God has strengthened me. And then First Peter said, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Mm -hmm. If any man minister, let him do it as all of the ability which God giveth. That God is all things may be glorified. <coughs> that God in all things may be glorified through Christ Jesus, to whom be praise and communion forever and ever. Mm -hmm. And then um, I got two more for you that let y'all know this is the truth. For Philippians 4:19 said, For my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus. Now that includes food. Clothing, shelter, companionship, love, and salvation. That's what I got. And I'm telling you, it's through, it's through God. Mm -hmm. It's through God because I called on the name of Jesus. And I confessed and believed it. And he strengthened me. And I'm here today to tell y'all this. Proverbs 10 and 22 said, The blessings of the Lord, it makes you rich, and he addeth not sorrow. That's why I'm not sorry or ashamed what I've been through. Because I got the strength of the Lord in me. And in my closing, I just want to say thank y'all for listening. And I hope that reached somebody. And I have cards over here if anybody needs to talk to me. Thank you. All right. Let's give her another round of applause. In the name of God, the beneficent, the merciful, the author of truth, and the sender of all prophets. I bear witness that there is no God but the one true God. Mm -hmm. I mean. Now, what I'm trying to introduce to y'all is something new. And sometimes it's hard for the old to accept something new because you've already been conditioned in the old. And, and your understanding of the new is like hard to perceive. And this is why the scripture says that the certain preachers or teachers won't be able to see into the hereafter. Mm -hmm. And it's because the hereafter would be something new. But they would be so conditioned in what they were doing that they accepted as the truth that the new would seem so foreign that they would think that it's false. Mm -hmm. And this is the problem that Jesus had when he came. Because if you look at the true story of Jesus, his enemies were the religious leaders and the teachers of his day. Amen. And they had a problem with what Jesus was teaching. Mm -hmm. Because it was different from what they taught and from what they had learned. Mm -hmm. It was unheard of. But Jesus was sent on a mission mm -hmm. by God to deliver this message. Mm -hmm. And his goal was to reach people who were disenfranchised and rejected by those leaders who Jesus referred to as hypocrites. Mm -hmm. And it's very important that you understand this. Now when Europeans came to America and they were under the authority of the crown of England, and at a point, they began to say, well, we need to set up our own government here in America. So they began to hold meetings where they were talking about how they would come from under the control of England and set up this country that we live in today, known as the United States. Mm -hmm. They had what was called the Continental Congress. 
and they began to formulate things of what they felt was good for their people here in America. And at one point, once they came from under the control of England, they began to set up their own government. And the first thing they produced was a flag. And the flag of America is the symbol of their nation. Now when you look at black people in America, we were brought here as slaves under the control of European people. And we had to struggle to come out of slavery. And as we came up out of slavery, because we no longer slaves physically today, but we never said, well, let's set up a government for ourselves that had our interests under its control. So when you look at Jesus, the first message that Jesus preached was repent for the kingdom of God is near. That's the first thing he ever said to the people. And when you look at the word repentance, repentance means an active turning away from sin. Mm -hmm. So what type of people do you have to be for someone to tell you repent? <laughs> You would have to be a sinful people. Because if you were a righteous person, it would serve no purpose for me to tell you to repent. So Jesus came to a people who needed to hear a message of repentance. When you look at black people here in America, and look at how we live. Alcoholics, we smoke cigarettes, we do drugs, we participate in illicit behavior, we violent, we rob, we do everything that would demand a call for repentance. Mm -hmm. Now, if we never been taught what repentance meant, if nobody never came and showed you a standard outside of the way you live, then you would think that what you're doing is normal. We think it's normal to smoke a cigarette because we see everybody doing it. We think it's normal to drink because we see everybody doing it. We think it's normal to smoke weed 